Administrator Nelson, please call station for a voice check. Uh, ISS, this is uh, NASA. NASA, and Mr. Nelson and all your team, welcome aboard the International Space Station. Great to have you. Hey, you all look terrific, just terrific. Tell us as you uh, are testing out this new spacecraft, tell us about uh, what, what you feel about it. Oh my, how long do you have? There's so much to say. I mean, from the launch was, I mean, just amazing. The throughout the, the ULA and the Atlas was right down the center all the way, and then uh, it was staging was kind of like a, it was a shock. You know, we went forward in our seats, and then the Centaur starts to light off. We go back, and the Centaur has this unique kind of no what nobody knew this because nobody's ever ridden one before. It's kind of got a half a hertz of a pulse. It's, you know, every two seconds, it's boom, boom, and it's just kind of stable the whole time and just, and again, right down the center all the way to space and then kind of a jarring end when we got to Miko, and then, of course, that we finally separate from the launch vehicle and uh, off and run into OI burn, and then from there, it was just uh, one extraordinary event after the other, and first time for both of us to be back in space for quite some time, and it was just great. Over to you. Yeah, I second everything that Butch said. It was a pretty spectacular ride. I mean, uh, we've been waiting for a long time for it. So uh, when it's everything started going, I think both of us were like, "Whoa, here we go! We're we're on the ride, and we're we're off to the races." So um, every time something interesting happened, even on the pre-launch count, we were trying to write it down. You know, we're both testers, so we wanted to pass all these words on to the next guys who are going to be flying on an Atlas V. And, uh, and same thing when we got into orbit, um, as Starliner was flying, and we were uh, flying it as well, doing some of our test points. We were marking a bunch of stuff down. So uh, good lessons learned for the rest of the team for uh, the future of Starliner. Well, I'm here with Pam and Jim, so I'm going to flip it to Pam. Butch and Sonny, man, it is so great to see you back in space uh, on ISS. Uh, it's it's a pretty awesome responsibility, but also a thrill for any tester to be the first one to fly a vehicle. And we're super excited about it. I I love that description of the launch. Um, I'm really interested about your initial impressions of some of the spacecraft performance, particularly the handling qualities testing that you've been doing. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, I tell you. Pam, and, and uh, we appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Uh, the simulators, as you know from your own experience, simulators typically are not as precise as, uh, as an aircraft, and that is the case with Starliner. Exactly. This spacecraft, the simulator is a great simulator, but the spacecraft was precise more so than any than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could, I could, we could stop on a on a dime, so to speak, put it exactly where we want it, and it would stay there. And uh, we have different uh, um, wide angle, wider, wider and smaller angles of dead bands that we call them. Then, so we'd get in those tight dead bands, and it would stay put right on on the number. And for testers, like you said, that's what we. This is what this mission is. It is a test mission. Every single phase, every single moment, and we're in evaluation mode. And that initial, just the initial control, both of us got in the left seat. Uh, it was it was amazing, and it was a thrill to to finally do it after doing it in the simulator for so long. Yeah, when, my task uh, when I got in the left seat was uh, I I joke around and I call it mooning the sun, putting a tail sun. <laughs> You know, and uh, so it's a big pitch down, um, and that spacecraft flies so smoothly on that pitch down, it, it felt really good. And then stopping it right on attitude, and we were trying to fine tune where we would get the most power, and we could go back and forth just a little bit to, you know, exactly find where that point was. Uh, so if we didn't have any guidance and we had to do it ourselves, we could do it uh, no problem. And the spacecraft really reacted great to even those big types of maneuvers like that. Yeah, just a little bit more on that. While we were doing that, there's a power. It gives you the power absorption or generation number on the, on the display. 
And it was when she I was watching it. She's maneuvering. And we were almost to the point where we thought we were going to stop based on all of our testing. And the number peaked at 14, 19, and then started going the other way. I said, there it is. You hit it. And we pull, went in because we don't have our displays up, our, our uh, attitude displays. So we pull up the attitude display. Sure enough, we're just barely past it. So even that piece of data on a display that has nothing to do with flight, just showing your power generation, was precise, right on. Pretty amazing. So are the guys on uh, Dragon, are they going to be uh, lusting, uh, wishing they were uh, on uh, Starliner? Hey, uh, all those Dragon guys would want to fly Starliner. Trust me, if they're test pilots, this is where they want to be. It's good stuff. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, it's really it's, uh, actually pretty. That's what I was going to say. It's, uh... I turned it off. Pam, I was just going to say, it's really pretty unique when you think about it. Here we are, uh, you know, Matt Dominic gave us a quick little tour up into Dragon. Uh, Oleg Konienko gave us a quick little tour in Soyuz. And then here on the front of the space station is Starliner. And when you stop and think about it for a second, Cygnus is on the space station too. It's pretty spectacular, all the different spacecraft that are here. And it's fun to sit around the dinner table and talk about how the three different spacecraft that we're flying you know, are controlled as, as well as, I forgot to mention Progress, which you can fly from the space station as well. So it's, it's a pretty unique venue where you get to talk about how to fly spacecraft to five different spacecraft uh, all in one, one place. So um, I don't know if they're jealous, but we all have diff they're all different and unique, and uh, it's fun just to compare. Yeah, that's a, that's I think a unique thing every tester I don't in the know, world historically. is jealous of you right now. Is jealous of you. <laughs> oh my! Well, we feel we feel very very fortunate. There's no doubt. Very very blessed. But I was just going to say I don't remember if there's ever been a time where three human rated spacecraft have been attached to the International Space Station. Yeah. I don't know if that's ever happened before uh, this mission. Um, human rated with humans on board. Put it like that. Um, so uh, we might have a first there as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's ever happened. Y'all need to dig into your history books and see if that's ever occurred before. Jim, over to you. So, uh, Sonny and Butch, it's great to see you both. And um, yeah, on behalf of the NASA and Boeing team, I just want to thank you for, for everything that you've done for this test flight, everything you've done to give us this second uh, method to get to ISS. Um, is is critical for us, everything you're doing just for human exploration in general. And you know, I want to make sure you know the importance of that and how much we are grateful for all you put into it. I've, I've learned so much since coming into this job of everything that you two as individuals have done, the time you waited to get here, the effort you put in uh, in the, in, in the uh, revisions to the software and just helping make the vehicle better and safer. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, Jim, we appreciate that. And, and honestly, we, we've, we're we honored and blessed uh, to have had this opportunity to continue with this opportunity. And all that, you know, it's a big team effort. You know that. Um, there's no couple of individuals that do it. And there's so many folks that uh, have put their all and their passion into it for quite a long time. Um, many, Obviously, all the Boeing team, folks within MO and other people that we work with, ULA as well. So uh, we're, we're honored, to, like I said, to, to represent them in this fashion and be this, this part of the large uh, puzzle, if you will, of all that has those pieces have to come together exactly right to make these things a success. It's on. Yeah, it took a little while to get across the finish line, uh, but we've, we, like Butch said, there's a huge family of people you know, in our teams that got us here, you know, we're just the tip of the sphere. So we, we have to say thank you to all of the folks who worked really hard on both NASA and Boeing team, um, ULA team, and put up with a lot for many, many years, a lot of questions from us. Um, and I, I think we all are, are better for it. Uh, one also shout out to our families, not only ours, but all those people who've been working, you know, Mission Control, uh, Boeing at the Bayer Boulevard building and the C-3PF. Uh, their families have been along for the ride as well, you know, hoping at one point in time the spacecraft would fly. And I, I think uh, the day we launched, a lot of people were relieved and excited and just psyched to, to see that rocket take off. So I know they've got a target for y'all to come home, but uh, do you want us to try to delay it? <laughs> 
uh, a while so you can have some more time? Uh, um, um, uh, Senator Nelson, I think, you know, uh, talking to astronauts as you do from time to time, there's not a single ast every astronaut looks forward to being in space and is not looking forward to coming home for many reasons. Uh, eventually, obviously it's time to come home. We all know that, but yeah, a little more time would be great. We actually did, uh, some space station work today, both of us, uh, working here on the space station. And that's, that's, that's really a lot of uh, joy in that, a feeling of accomplishment as well when you take something that's not working, like the, the part of the potty, the processing uh, units that takes the, the sweat and the urine and everything and turns it into potable water. It's a pretty amazing process. And uh, bring a part up for that and, and rectify some, you know, things break, and that one, that one needed replacing. So uh, it, it's just a great feeling of accomplishment all the way around in many respects. Yeah, yeah it was so, fun working with a team today from uh, Cleveland. And, uh, you know, there's people from all over the world who have uh, experiments and uh, just doing studies up here. So it's pretty – it's really rewarding when you can actually – participate in that and be part of this uh, research station that we're on right now. So both of us, uh, this today was our first day where we stayed out of Starliner and got to do a little ISS research, and that was uh, really fun and rewarding and uh, makes us part of the team. And we, we've got a great team here. You know, we, we don't really want to leave because we like these guys. <laughs> and we, we want to see them go out the door and do a couple spacewalks and, um, and help out any way we can. So you guys have made us proud. Uh, you, uh, along with the team, have done exactly what NASA tries to do. We launch when it's ready. We'll bring you home when it's ready. Thank you for your service to our country. And now, after uh, this and the continuation of the ISS, all the science you're going to produce, uh, indeed, Planet Earth is going to be the beneficiary. Thank you, guys. We're going to turn it over to uh, Vanessa White to ask you some questions, too. Hi, Butch and Sonny. How are you guys? Vanessa, we are doing well. Doing Thank great. you. It's great to, great to have you on board the space station as well. Absolutely. And uh, uh, just as was said uh, by our other NASA leadership, I also want to congratulate you and tell you just how much pride everyone on the ground feels. You guys represent the best of what human spaceflight is about. Um, one of the things that uh, I've been getting questions about is people have been saying, hey, you know, they've trained uh, for this mission and they are um, seasoned astronauts. Have they learned or are they experiencing anything new? They want to know if, you, if you're feeling or seeing or experiencing anything new on this particular mission. I, I think that the way I would respond to that is that we have not, resp we have not experienced very much that was not new. <laughs> Everything is new. Everything we're doing, I mean, from from the the, the spacesuits and putting them on and getting doing the, that process and launching and uh, OI burns and and circularizing our orbit and all the little burns that get us up to the space station, I mean, every single thing. I mean, we're 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 putting our spacesuits on in the spacecraft yesterday, getting ready for the return. How we will do that and developing those those techniques and processes. Uh, so, yeah, everything we've done is brand new. It's been great. Yeah, and Vanessa, I would add also the space station, even though it's really familiar, it's like our home away from home and, you know, you know where to go and all that kind of stuff. There's been so many improvements over the last number of years. We don't have to get into how many, but the number of years since Butch and I have been here, um, it's incredible. You know, it's flying around usually with an iPad on your leg that has your task all, you know, instead of going to a specific computer, just, you know, a quick example like that. Um, the way things are organized, there's, you know, new food, everything is, is new here. So um, it's, it's always something new to explore and understand. And, uh, you know, we're just, it's just fun, actually. That's what makes it fun. It's not boring. That's awesome. I want you to know that your reunion uh, with the crew on board uh, on Dock Day 
Uh, Sonny, do you know that your dance has gone viral? I, I, I don't know. The music just took me. I don't know what else to say. We had a little bit of music as we came on board, and it was just... It was just really awesome to open the hatch and see these guys, and uh, you know, we, a lot of them you know, we've, been, we've worked with before. Tracy and Pojo were both Capcoms for Starliner for a long time. You know, Jeanette, we've I've trained with her before. You know, Mike Bear was your classmate, and you know, we've known him for a long time. Oleg, of course, we've all known Oleg for a long time, and you know, Nikolai, who's up here with him, of course, we know him just because they're up here for a long time, and just got to know Sasha right before launch, and so it was just, it was just a, like a little bit of a family reunion. Hey, we're in space, and we're here to help. We're here to have fun with you guys. You think Sonny's dance went viral. I pur purposely did not dance because I know it would have gone real viral. So you don't want to see me dance. <laughs> well, again, uh, on behalf of everyone here on the ground from all across NASA, Boeing, ULA, uh, the human spaceflight community, everyone says just a big congratulations. We'll continue to follow and uh, track all of the things that you're doing. And um, as was said, um, we understand we're going to take time and uh, make sure that things are ready for your return. For your return. Yeah, outstanding, Vanessa. We appreciate all of those words, all you, all your words, everything you've said. And like I said, it's, it, it is an honor to, to be here. I mean, on this camera. I mean, I'm not standing next to Sonny because I can do that on Earth, but I can't do this on Earth. So that's why, just, just do what you can while you're here and enjoy it. So, and we're taking full advantage of that. And we're just grateful, like I said, and blessed to have the opportunity. Thank you so much, all of you.